Sandley coming to you with 100,000 watts of pure, healing, miracle-working love. I want to talk to you today about frustration and your future, or why God may not be answering you at this time in your life. More importantly, I want to talk to you about G-O-D. Go, obey, and do. Someone listening to me today is in a state of frustration. You are a servant of God. You are anointed of God. And you are frustrated. The Lord has sent me to tell you, hang in there. Your miracles are on their way. I know what you're thinking. Well, why doesn't he send me my miracles now? Why am I frustrated? I will answer that. Because God is preparing your enemy. When the children of Israel left Egypt under the mighty deliverance of the Passover, they were then hemmed in between Migdal and the sea, with Pharaoh chasing them with 600 of his chosen chariots of war. In the Torah, we read in the book of Exodus, chapter 14, And Pharaoh made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots, plus all the chariots of Egypt, and captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. I counted one time the number of times that the Bible refers to the hardening of Pharaoh's heart. As I remember, it was 21 times. It's been several years. I don't remember exactly. But many of those times were where God hardened his heart, and the other times where Pharaoh hardened his own heart. But overall, God had purposed the hardening of Pharaoh's heart because God was wanting to bring miracles and deliverance, freedom, prosperity, and blessing to God's children, the children of Israel. And at the same time, God was preparing Pharaoh to be wiped out, to be totally eliminated as an oppressor for God's people. When the children of Israel were hemmed in between Migdal and the sea, they thought, why can't God keep us delivered? Have you ever wondered that? Have you ever said, God, why can't you keep me healed? Why can't you keep me delivered? Why can't you keep me prospered? God does a miracle for you and blesses you financially, blesses you with tremendous healing miracles, prospers you, gives you great victory and success, and then something else comes up. You know, you're always going to have some things coming up in life, but that's why you have Jesus, because you need a Savior. You're not perfect. And you need the connection between you and God to bring the miracles you need to go through every time. Someone listening to me today is thinking, why can't God keep me prosperous or healthy or victorious? He can, my friend. The same God that has delivered you in the past wants to deliver you again and again and again. The Israelites told Moshe, because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us out to die in this wilderness? Why have you dealt with us like this, to bring us out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we told you in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in this wilderness. You can read that in the Torah in Exodus chapter 14, verses 11 to 12. Somebody listening to me right now, I see you in the Spirit. You've made a big change. You've made a transition. You stepped out in faith, but things aren't clicking. And you're beginning to think, I should go back. Why did I leave the flesh pots of Egypt? Things were better there. Don't act too fast, my friend. This is the time you need to stop and listen. And listen to the rest of this message. God has sent me to help you today. I want to ask you a question. Are you where God wants you to be? Listen to or read the show notes of my recent podcast titled, The Perfect Center of God's Will. Also, listen to or read my three-part series on Follow Your Heart. The link for all these is in the show notes of this podcast. What you have to realize is that your enemy is not a leader of a world empire like Pharaoh. Your enemy is stronger than Pharaoh. Your enemy is a leader of a universal empire known as the kingdom of Satan. This is why you must position yourself into the intersection of holy rest, the intersection of miracles, the intersection of God's perfect will. All three of these, my friend, are action vertices that are concomitant, concurrent, 
When you are in the center of God's perfect will for your life, you will experience God's rest and God's miracles. Your arch enemy, the devil, Satan, does not want you to be in the perfect center of God's will for your life. And the devil may use people, even Christians, to work through at times so that because of relational proximity, you are perceiving your enemy as a person or people. So when frustration is invading you, back up one step. Analyze the situation. Analyze who and what is blocking you, keeping you at a dead end. Get up and do something about it. It may be yourself that is blocking you. Some people are their own greatest enemies. The problem is always someone else as far as they're concerned. They have a dead-end mindset. My friend, if you're driving your automobile and find yourself at a dead end, that doesn't mean that you are a dead end. Get out and walk. Get out of that situation. Get up. Go. And the same thing is true spiritually. If you know the Messiah of Israel, the Mashiach ben David, if you know Yeshua, there is nothing and no one that can bind you. There is no situation in life that can bind you. Get up in the name of Jesus, walk out of that situation, and be free. Let me share something with you, my friend. When you are frustrated, many times you are sick. Maybe not physically, but emotionally, spiritually, or financially. And the real reason you are sick and frustrated is because you are not trusting God. You may even feel sick in your human spirit, your heart. You feel lean in your soul because you're leaning on or trusting someone else other than God. If you're leaning on someone other than God to take care of you or provide you, then do not expect God to lead you. God can take care of you in any way and anywhere. I flew into Accra, Ghana one time, and a lady met me with a sack full of money. She said, do you need any money? Now, if you've ever been to Ghana, West Africa, I think you'll find this quite unusual or in the realm of miracles. When Rabbi Shaul, that was his Hebrew name, he was the same as the Apostle Paul, that was his Roman name, when he was on his way to Damascus to incarcerate and murder Christians, he was knocked down by a brilliant light from heaven. And Rabbi Shaul fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Shaul, Shaul, why do you persecute me? And Rabbi Shaul said, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Yeshua, whom you persecute. And he trembled, and he was astonished, and he said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Get up and go into the city, and it will be told you what you must do. You can read that account in the Brit Hadashah, the Hebrew New Testament or New Covenant, in the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 3 to 6. That's what you have to do, my friend. Number one, pray. Number two, listen to what God is telling you. And then number three, G-O-D. Go, obey, and do. Get up, my friend. Go, obey, and do that thing you are supposed to be doing. Do not be concerned about your enemy. The Lord Yeshua has been preparing him, as he did Pharaoh, to be wiped out. You see, what you did not realize all this time was that God has been preparing your enemy to launch you into your next phase of dominion, your next assignment of success, and God has given you complete victory over your enemy. Just as the children of Israel looked the next morning into the Red Sea and saw Pharaoh and the Egyptians drowned, so you'll look back and see how God completely destroyed the attacks of your enemy against you and brought you out victoriously. Now, my friend, if you do not know Yeshua, you can now. Pray and ask the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, to reveal to you if Yeshua is really your Mashiach. And when he does, then receive him, obey him, and live for him. This has been your friend, Prince Handley, coming to you with 100,000 watts of pure, healing, miracle-working love. Baruch Abba, Adonai.